Hey there, YouTube. Man, it is hot here in Southern California. Even at, oh, 7.15, it's still in the 90s. Yeah, I know, maybe it's not Phoenix, but feels hot to me. Notice I'm wearing my Johnny Cash outfit. And I'm doing that because Johnny Cash, he was a very cool character. And I thought, well, I'll do whatever I can to feel cooler out here. But I don't think it's working. But we're not here to talk about Johnny or the weather, no. We're here to talk about saddles and shoes because I got a basket full of physique stuff. I'm gonna talk about what I've had, how it's treated me, coming right up. This saddle is full of holes. Kind of a Swiss cheese thing going on, doesn't it? Well, this is new technology, isn't it? And you saw it first, I think, from Specialized. 3D printed saddles. You know, we got 3D printed almost everything these days. They probably be 3D printing a bike pretty soon. But this is kind of new tech, isn't it? It's not cheap tech either, but it does seem like it promises to make a better saddle. Well, has it? Has this made a better saddle for me? Some thoughts on that coming up, but first let's take a look at the technology from Physique and what saddles I have and some details about them, weights, measurements, all that kind of stuff. Here you go. Now adaptive, that's Physique's 3D printing uh, catch-all phrase. Kind of cool really, right? You put a bunch of goo into a printer head and it spits out layers of saddle until you're happy with it. Anyway, it's cool looking. It certainly is kind of the latest, greatest thing. Um, well, we shall see. It certainly has to be kind of neat from a manufacturing standpoint. It's almost infinitely tunable. So if you want to uh, change it on the fly and change your different zones, because you can create all these different, you know, different zones of uh, squishiness in your saddle, well, you just change your program and print it out. Uh, so that is pretty cool. I don't know what the durability will be on this compared to a normal saddle. I don't know. I guess time will tell. But uh, yeah, it's certainly got some stuff going on that is interesting to say the least. Now the first saddle I have is the Antares Versus Evo R3 Adaptive with Kium hollow rails. I have no idea what Kium is. I couldn't find that on their website. It's a hollow metal rail basically, some kind of alloy. It is not carbon. And you can see it's kind of long, kind of narrow, and uh, pretty flat in its shape and kind of says, hey, I'm a roadie. But I guess you could use this on a gravel bike because it does have some good compliance to it. The next saddle is the Vento Argo R3 Adaptive. Shorter nosed type of saddle, but not as short as some. Um, quite a bit more of a full bodied saddle. And you can see all the different zones in it that are called out between those uh, solid gray lines. Each one of those feels different when you push on it. Um, definitely seems to be more of an all around saddle. Uh, for this, it uh, seemed like this was a good gravel bike application, and that's the way I ran it. When I first saw this, I thought, hmm, that's kind of a road racy looking thing. That might be very interesting to try on my road bike. Now, my favorite saddle on my road bike, as of now at least, is the Ritchie Skyline. You can see the Ritchie Skyline here. It, uh, is kind of a long, narrow uh, kind of saddle. Um, definitely looks like a road saddle, I'm sure. And that has proven to be an excellent saddle on long days, hard efforts. It's treated me very, very well. So how was the Argo? Well, not nearly as good, actually. In fact, I have to say that uh, I didn't use this for very long because I really, really did not like it. Uh, why was that? Well, you know, first of all, saddles are very individual. So just because I don't like it, doesn't mean it sucks, just means I didn't like it. I felt on this like I was sitting on two narrow little rails, like railroad car rails, for lack of a better term. And when I got off of them either way, felt very unpleasant. I did not care for that much at all. One of the other things I thought was not in its favor, although it never bothered me, but it might, is this hard plastic tail on it. That's a pretty sharp edge. If you ever got on the other side of that, I would not want to hit that. No, I would not in any kind of a crash or if you're on a gravel bike, you're trying to really get behind your saddle. I don't think that would be so good. So for me, this was just not a win, but I've got another saddle to talk about. 
this was actually quite a good saddle. Um, I use this on the gravel bike because it seemed to be in that vein of shorter nose saddles, although this isn't as short as some are. And this just got all kinds of zones going on, right? This feels different than this, which feels different than this. You can see they're kind of separated by little dividers and channels there. Actually very interesting saddle. I found this actually quite good to use. In fact, I have only a couple things really to say about it that I didn't care for. But generally speaking, um, most of the time it just kind of disappeared underneath me. And uh, that's what you want a saddle to do, right? The couple things I didn't like, I had to run it quite a bit nose down. It seemed like I, I was trying to, I felt like I was slipping off the back of this um, when I ran it, what I would consider, you know, just slightly nose down. I don't know if that's because there's flex in the back of the shell or the tail, or it simply needed a little bit of kick for me to feel like I was planted there. That was one thing that wasn't a deal killer, but um, you know, I noticed it. And the other thing was, and this goes to the technology here, and we'll be talking about the technology at, at the end of this, this honeycomb kind of pattern in it. If I was touching the saddle where my chamois pad ended, like on the shorts itself, there are times I would actually feel this. And it wasn't necessarily all that pleasant. In fact, if you rub against this with your fingers, it's fairly coarse feeling. And uh, I'm not so sure if that's such a great thing. In any case, it was something I noticed. But overall, if you said granny gear, this is a saddle that uh, you have to use from now on on your gravel bike, I could deal with that. Not bad at all. So let's think about the technology here, the 3D printing. It's interesting, but is it a better saddle? Does it, not necessarily this one, but does it make for a better saddle? Well, I don't know, because if this is any indication of whether or not the saddle is better, then for instance, my much loved WTB Gravelier, the saddle that is on my gravel bike and has proven to be excellent. If that's what I'm comparing this to, this cost more, it weighs more, and it really wasn't all that more comfortable. In fact, sometimes, this may be the third thing I would mention, when you move from zone to zone, it divides like on the lines, here you can see them, right? I could really feel that I just changed um, compliance, if you will, or squishiness in the saddle. It was noticeable, it was like on, off. Ooh, yeah, oh, yeah, that was, uh, that, Felt kind of weird sometimes. Now, generally, you just kind of sit in one spot. But when I did move around, it felt a little odd where on a normal saddle, I guess there can be zones built into the padding. I suppose there could be. And the, the, the shell can flex different ways. But um, they're more consistent, typically, or at least that's what I've found. So in this case, is new technology always giving us better and better things? Case in point that Sometimes the oldies are still the goldies. If I said Brooks Saddle, probably a lot of you that wouldn't know what that is, but my audience is an older audience, and I'm thinking most of you, if you've been in cycling for many years, you'd know what a Brooks Saddle was. Basically, it's a big old slab of leather stretched between steel rails. Heavier than all get out, right? Yeah, these things are a beast. When you talk about adaptive, what that leather does over time and why they become so loved is it adapts to you because it's like a good pair of boots, right? After a while, you shape it to you. And, and people love those things. Yes, you gotta treat the leather and all that. And, and like I said, they're heavier and I'll get out and I can't imagine anybody having the nerve put that on their carbon gravel or road bike. But you know, if, you, if you're bold enough, go ahead. Just cause of the funny looks you'd get. Sometimes technology, I wonder if it leads us down a path of expense promises more than it delivers. I don't really know if that's the case for all 3D printed saddles. I think in this case, I don't really feel this was doing that much for me. Maybe I just didn't have the right 3D printed saddle, but it's interesting technology and maybe that is the future. I don't know. We'll see. And besides the saddles, well, we have a shoe, don't we? This is the Physique Terra Atlas. Let's take a look at that and see what this shoe is all about. Kind of good looking, isn't it? But then I like pink and purple. If you don't like pink and purple, then it comes in green and all kinds of other more normal colors. Now, Physique calls this out as a true all-terrain, all-road cycling shoe for gravel, 
mountain bike trails, all day adventures, bike packing, and for riders who know no borders, it only costs you $159.99, which actually is not all that inexpensive. Uh, we shall see how that works out. The sole is uh, pretty nice, pretty aggressive, some good soft lugs to it. It's SPD, of course. And um, yeah, um, I think it's a kind of a good looking shoe. And here you can see a little video from Physique of riders who know no borders, presumably out riding uh, without any borders. But I think they got the idea behind this shoe kind of pegged with this kind of riding, because I think it does fit into that uh, pretty well. We shall see how that worked out. And here we have the shoe. The Physique Terra Atlas in a very, very nice pink and purple. Yeah, you know, I love this colorway. I really do. Yeah, I know it's going to show the dirt and all that. Yes, of course. However, I think it's got some good style to it. So how was the shoe for me? Well, kind of a mixed bag. I don't think this was a win either, um, but it wasn't terrible as well. It's a very walkable shoe. If you tend to do a lot of hike a bike, especially in areas where you know, rocky stream beds or loose hillsides where you're up ledges and whatnot. This rubber is quite soft, good traction. There's a fair amount of flex in this shoe, uh, which is good if you're hiking. Not so good if you're a very, very heavy rider and putting a lot of power into the pedal. And they say this, I think, is like a five out of 10 stiffness, if I recall. But in any case, not the stiff shoe. However, if you're hiking a lot, a stiff shoe is not your friend, not a super stiff shoe, at least. It does have a little, uh, some little rubber embossments here. You probably can't see it in the heel. Supposedly designed to keep your heel from um, coming up out of the shoe as you're hiking. Um, I didn't find that as effective as like the uh, cat's tongue material you see. I think Shimano has that, maybe others. That definitely holds better. And I would think that over time, these little rubber embossments are just simply gonna wear out and they just won't be there anymore. Now, one thing to know, if you're hiking in an extremely stiff shoe that holds your heel in with an aggressive heel cup and you're hiking in it, that's a lot of strain on your Achilles. So watch that. Sometimes a shoe with a little bit of slip or maybe if you have a stiff shoe that doesn't let your heel slip, crack that a little bit loose uh, on the fixins, right? So your foot can move in there or you, you might strain something. Just a little advice. It's also a fairly heavy shoe. Now here's a line of all the shoes I have in my closet at the moment. I think I missed one in there somewhere, but. But in any case, uh, all of those shoes are comparably priced. In fact, all of those shoes you see in that picture cost less than this one. And they all weigh less as well. And pretty much all of them in that uh, picture I just showed you fit me better than this. One of the things that's lacking in here is a really uh, much of an insole. There isn't much going on here as far as support and such. Um, that could be better. I mean, you could, you could buy, I suppose, an insole to put in here from Specialized or somebody like that, Bont Rager has them. Um, I don't know if Physique offers them or not, they might. Depending upon your, your arch and whatnot, that may not be so good. The other thing that I thought was not so great, now it's a boa dial, and that's pretty cool. Tensions, but you can't go backwards to detension the shoe, like a, like a lot of shoes, you gotta pull it out and then detension the shoe push it back in and retention to where you want it. The thing is with this particular boa knob, it's very hard plastic. There's not much of an edge to get your finger behind. So when you're riding, especially I ride with thin long finger gloves pretty much all the time. I just like that. I had a devil of a time getting behind this knob and pulling it out. Now I can do it sitting here, but riding, there are times I actually would have to stop, right? And, and do this because I couldn't do it while I was riding and pedal all at the same time. I think that could be better. A little rubber here would go a long ways. Well, the sun is sinking in the west. I guess it's about time to wrap this up. Thanks to Physique for providing these samples for me at no charge. That's actually quite a good saddle. And I think of everything I have here, this is the most worthy of a good looking at by somebody, you know? Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for being here. I hope you guys are having a great summer. Uh, take care, go ride your bikes. Have fun, enjoy your life. Subscribe if you like it, because I'd like to have you along for all the other neat things I got coming up. Meanwhile, Johnny Cash and me, we're saying goodnight. <laughs>